Hello once again, Star Wars and Unboxing fans. Welcome to another episode of Darth Tuba Star Wars Unboxing Show. And boy, do we have an unboxing show today. This is my, I guess you could call it my Celebration Chicago eBay haul. That's right. Everything you see here was purchased either on eBay or on another site similar to that to purchase some, not all, not nearly all, but some of the merchandise that was made available at Star Wars Celebration Chicago. Uh, I, as people know, I was not, I was not able to attend. I promise I will get to one of these eventually. I have been to three, maybe four, three or four, but uh, at least three, and they were awesome. They were fantastic. I have not been to one in the last few years. Uh, with a daughter going to college and everything, it was just too hard to swing. But now. Um, you know, eBay and, and the internet makes it feel like you were there. And if there's some things that you really like and you really want to collect um, as, a, as a Star Wars collector, there is no shortage of opportunities for you to do that. So I picked and choose, picked, picked and chose, and I decided to uh, have a few of these items here and I will put them on display, okay, for you right now. Before we get to the actual unboxing, I do want to point out my can see it there my interesting shirt with Arabesh writing coca-cola for those who watched any of the panels uh, and you know either there or after the fact the galaxy's edge panel by Disney they had a lot of great new things that they were talking about things that you can expect the kind of merchandise you can expect and they made a big reveal although some would argue that it was kind of a cheap not so big reveal but I personally thought it was cool and that was the fact that are that they'll be putting Coke products in Galaxy's Edge, but instead of them being just standard Coke bottles or Dasani water bottles, they were going to theme them to Star Wars and have them be in Arobesh writing and special looking bottles. They uh, announced this at the, at the uh, event, at the Galaxy's Edge panel, and they gave out shirts to everybody that was there. That was such a cool thing, but you know, there are many people there that don't really care and decided to put the shirt on eBay. And I was one of those fools, if you want to say that, that decided to make that purchase. You know what? I'm okay with that. And I'll tell you why I'm okay with that. Because A, that was something I was really excited about. Why? I am amazed at the, the attention of detail that Disney is doing in, up, to the, up to the level of getting their partners, their advertising partners, to submit to the, the in-universe descriptions of everything. And that's a really cool thing. That's a really unique step. Okay, it's not something that you see every day. Not even in Avatar uh, Pandora do you have that level. It comes close, but it's not that level. So I thought this shirt was a really cool thing. So I did pick it up on eBay. I did wear it. I was in Disney, as you saw on the previous video. I was in Disney uh, a few days ago, and when I was walking around Hollywood Studios, I must have had at least a dozen cast members uh, or guests say, that's such a cool shirt, where'd you get that? Or did you go to Celebration? I'm like, well, no, I didn't eBay, but hey, it's cool. So. It also says Star Wars Galaxy's Edge on the side here, Coca-Cola and regular English writing on this side. So a really cool thing. And, I'm, and, and the way I see it, guys, is that's now you're going to go and buy, when you buy water or Coke or Diet Coke or Sprite, you've instantly got a collectible. So that's a really cool thing. So excited about that. But then there's everything else here. So why don't we get started? Now this, I have to say, I apologize. This really wasn't supposed to be here. These are actually, put this down here. These are, well... If you want to know what they are, these are uh, essentially the clear plastic cases that I sometimes put figures in. If you've seen in my previous videos, um, when when I when I open up loose figures, I sometimes hang them, put them in uh, clear cases, and hang them up, and then I can take them out and put them in whenever I want. Put them in displays, take them out, so they're a little more versatile that way. That was actually a uh, a set of a hundred of those. So, you know, for for future unboxings, hint hint. So anyway. So we have a lot of other ones to do here. So I think I'm just gonna start with the first one I can come up with. Now, I'm, now I haven't, I've, the only one I've opened, I think I've only opened one here. So I'm not 100% sure. I'm pretty sure all of these are um, from Celebration. If not, I will be embarrassed, but that's okay. Let me get this one. Now I will say this, for, as far as eBay and whatnot is concerned, um, I am not ashamed of purchasing something that I really like that I see at a convention on eBay. I am not ashamed of even paying a little extra money for it. I feel that the person who um, 
I understand that there are people who get in line whose sole purpose it is is to buy as many of these items as they can and thereby and then flood the eBay market with them to try to make um, fast cash. I get that. I understand that. But the reality of it is when I really want something, if this is something I really, really wish to have, and I'm not at celebration, I don't mind paying a little bit extra because I didn't travel to celebration. I didn't pay for flight. I didn't pay for hotel. I didn't pay for any of the uh, celebration ticketing, ticketing. I didn't pay for food. I didn't pay for any other aspects that go along with going to a convention like that. So the way I see it is, you know, all right. That's, I'm willing to pay that. So that's kind of how I feel. I'm not apologetic about it. Um, I wish that there was a way that people didn't need to, um, you know, that I wish there was a way that all the people that were at Celebration were able to make those purchases. Like that they, they, they weren't able to be, they weren't shut out. But then again, because I'm, I'm not interested in whether something is rare or not. I just think, I just purchase things that I like. I think that they're really cool. Okay, and this is, well, I guess I'm saving the best for first because <laughs> I just opened it up and it's all random. This is the Star Wars Celebration Ralph McQuarrie concept art. And I'll get some close-ups. I am not going to open up necessarily everything in this episode. This is a Star Wars ornament. And I'm going to open it up when we have our Christmas ornament op opens up. So I'm going to put it, I'll get a close-up of the box. But it's R2 and 3PO in the Ralph McQuarrie concept art really really cool stuff i will say that i just want to make sure i'm not missing oh oh and apparently we got something else here okay uh let me just make sure there's nothing else in the box before i uh oh cool okay so in addition to that in addition to that um they also included and i'll get a close-up photo of it of a uh r5d4 looks like he's in mid explosion from uh the Star Wars A New Hope. So, nice little pin. So that's kind of a cool little thing. I am uh, very, very much in love with this ornament, these ornaments, because I really feel like this is where Star Wars began. Okay? You know, Lucas put the idea in his head, but it was Ralph McQuarrie, the concept artist, who really helped take his ideas and, and put them on paper in a visual way, put them in a way that people could see. And it was this was his first painting was R2 and 3 I believe. And or one of his first paintings. And that, in essence, allowed him to allow George Lucas to sell the item to investors for and allowed him to fund the film. So there you go. Alright, switching gears a little bit. What else we got? This is from an Amazon Prime. Okay, this was a okay, yeah. This is something I saw. I forget exactly where I saw it. I think in in the in the Star Wars live Star Wars live show, they went around to some of the booths, and this was just one company that was selling what I am absolutely in love with. They are Star Wars salt and pepper grinders. Okay, I am you know I they are empty at this point, but not exactly sure. Uh, it looks like they are battery powered, so they'll grind automatically. So that is amazing. So I am super pumped to have these. I do a lot, of, a little bit of baking and uh, and cooking, and and I kind of like to have my salt and pepper shakers and made. I like to use, you know, the standard stuff here. Um, I don't know. Maybe I don't know if it's battery operated or not. Oh, battery powered. Yes. All right, let's see. Do I have any? These things do not want to stay on here. I'm looking. I don't want to break the thing to change out the batteries here. So what I think I'm going to do. I don't want to like. Okay, I'll get those batteries in there later. I don't think they make any sounds or anything. I just think they're they're you you press a button at the top and they grind. So, but of course they have dark side, light side. So I'm assuming dark side or pepper, light side is salt. That's going to be my assumption. But I just thought these were so cool. I love the kitchen gadgets. Um, I have a couple of those little things. It's really cool. I, uh, you know, I I do have the toaster. I do have the. I don't have the Death Star waffle maker. I'm thinking about that one. But I don't eat a lot of waffles, so it's not something that I feel like I'm ready to do. But I will add that to the kitchen. That'll be really cool. And let's move on with this one. 
Some of these I did open in advance just to make sure. Actually, no. This one my daughter opened because she was looking for something in the mail for her. And she thought they might have accidentally been sent to me, which I was like, no, you get your mail. I get my mail. So, But this is the Star Wars Celebration exclusive Watto. Yes. In celebration of the 20th anniversary of The Phantom Menace, we have Watto, one of my favorite characters from The Phantom Menace. And I'll say this. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Phantom Menace, man, it gets a bad rap. I'm sorry, it does. I don't mind if you didn't love it. I don't mind if you even didn't like it that much. But come on, it's a great movie, all right? It, it's in there with the Star Wars canon. It's in there with the Star Wars you know, saga. It starts the journey of Anakin Skywalker. It starts the journey that we see of Obi-Wan Kenobi of C-3PO, of R2, let's just let it go, okay? And you know, and one of the things I loved about Celebration was the love and outpouringness that they were showing, not only for the Phantom Menace, but for Ahmed Best, who played Jar Jar Binks, and has been dealing with a lot of stuff over the years because of toxic fandom. And, and again, you know, it's okay if you don't like the movie. It's okay if you're not a fan of, of the character. I, I get that. If you don't like the direction that George Lucas took in it, that's fine too, all right? I didn't, I just didn't, you know, I didn't love Jar Jar. I just didn't hate him. You know, I just thought he was there and that was fine. I really love Watto, though. I thought Watto was a great character. I thought um, it was just kind of a, almost like a, I guess, like Star Wars' answer to, this, to, and to the Star Trek universe's Ferengi. He's just kind of like the, the sleazy businessman kind of thing. I thought it was really cool. So um, I don't know if I'm going to open this one, though. It looks like he comes in a little protective case. So I might leave him kind of on display here. Okay, so maybe I'll just kind of find a little spot for him there. All right, moving right along. What else we got? Uh, let's take a look at this one. Okay, and again, you know, to the people, a lot of people, I will say this, I have gone on celebrations, I have purchased multiple figures, and I have sold them on eBay, not for much money. In fact, when I do sell things on eBay that I've purchased in, in celebrations or in Comic-Cons, I generally put the price lower than what I paid. The way I see it is that if people are going to, you know, that way, they, look, if somebody pays, if I pay $20 for an item, I'll put it on eBay for 15 Okay. And, or maybe 15 plus shipping. And if somebody pays 15 for it and that's it, great. I'm, I know I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm out a little bit of money, but I don't care. The way I see it is I'm bringing that, that purchase to another person. Okay. If two, 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 three, four, five people are, you know, putting bids on it, fighting over it, and it goes up to $80. Okay. I didn't do that. I didn't set that price. They did. Okay. That's people who really wanted an item so bit, so badly that they were willing to put bids on it. It's a free enterprise. That's what's cool about it. So I don't mind doing it. You know, I, I paid fairly what I felt was deserving. Okay. And again, with the idea that I didn't have a, oh my, what is, what am I doing? Am I getting the right thing here? This is very, 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 it's like a box in another box. Oh yes. Okay. I know what this is. <laughs> I'm always afraid I ordered something that I shouldn't be putting on a camera, but no, that doesn't happen. There's nothing I can order. I can assure you, there's nothing I order that I don't want to put on camera. It's just not Star Wars related. All right. Uh, this is another cool item. Again, in celebration of the 20th anniversary of Star Wars. Oh, and it's another Hallmark item, which is cool. Although I realize I probably can get <coughs> This might actually be available at <coughs> Hallmark stores. Although it does say event exclusive. This is a Darth Maul, another Darth Maul salt and pepper shaker, but just a standard ceramic salt and pepper shaker this one i'll open up because it does what i love about creative product okay you've got the salt the pepper here's darth maul and here's darth maul at the end of phantom menace in half i just thought that was the coolest most interesting thing you're going to ever see. So I was loving that. I'm very pleased with that. And it is okay by me. So thank you to Hallmark for coming up with so many cool things. And I'm going to toss my boxes over there. All right. So there's Darth Maul. Darth Maul, the salt and pepper shaker next to the salt and pepper grinders. Moving on. Okay, this is an item that I'm really excited about. I don't know if it's an exclusive to Star Wars Celebration, but again, a lot of my things here are Hallmark based. This is, believe it or not, this is an itty bitty 
Chewbacca bandolier strap. Do you, can you believe it? You can actually put your little Star Wars itty bitties in the bandolier strap. I am so excited, and that is exactly what I plan to do. And I plan on displaying them with the bandolier strap. And I hope that Hallmark. This I hope that this is not a uh, convention exclusive. It doesn't say so. I don't think. Uh, oh, dang it, it does. Darn, event exclusive. All right, because I really like it and I want to get more so I can put more itty bitties. What a great way to display it. It's so cool. Okay, so there you go with that. All right, now here's a great one. This is not um, from an individual. This is not an eBay purchase. This was from Stance, which is a sock company. But they had some really cool exclusive socks available. And this is one of them. And this is my first pair of Stance socks. It is a, a pair of Ralph McQuarrie concept art. This is Boba Fett. And it looks like, um, yeah, basically Boba Fett concept art, which he was basically supposed to be like a super stormtrooper kind of thing. And they have gotten really good write-ups of being really, really good socks. So I have purchased it. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to keep them on display. I am actually going to wear them. Okay, but I love the art. There was another pair that I wanted, but these pair were like a reasonable price. I think $17, $18. And the other pair were $150. And I said, well, I am not paying that much for socks. Sorry, but I'm not. All right, one more, one more item. What could it be? What could it be? Hmm. I thought I got it through everything that I ordered. Um, but... And my, by the way, one suggestion that I have, if you are um, unable to attend Star Wars Celebration, but you're really interested in it, you can and should turn on the Star Wars show live, um, or the Star, the Star Wars show, which is on StarWars.com, you can get it on YouTube, just type in Star Wars, and their channel, the Star Wars channel, they actually run the Star Wars show uh, weekly, it's like usually a 7 to 10 minute a weekly show. Um, Andy Gutierrez and Anthony Carboni are the um, hosts. Uh, I, they are awesome. They just give you some basic Star Wars news for the week. And they have some interviews with some cool people there. Everybody from actors from, from the movies to um, creative art to creative people behind the scenes in the movies. And even just other people unrelated to Star Wars that are just super Star Wars fans. So that's a really cool thing. And uh, they do live feeds from... They have done live feeds from the past four celebrations, I think. At least three, maybe four. They've also done world carpet premieres um, of all the last four movies that have come out. Um, right? Episode 7, or 1, Episode 8, and Solo. And they're just a lot of fun. They're very entertaining, and it's it's like being there. It gives you a sense of being there. And the best thing to do is to have your phone with you, watch it on an Apple TV, or if you can put it on your TV in some capacity, have it on all day, and if there's something you see that you really like, boom, hit on eBay and see what you can find. Obviously, don't go crazy. you got to keep your limits. But that's the way I would suggest because then it feels like you're there and if you want to do a little bit of shopping and get, and get a little bit of items and you know souvenirs from the, from the event to add to your collection, boom, that's the way to do it. That's what I suggest. It's a lot cheaper than going there. However, nothing beats being there in person, I know, and I will get there again someday. It is an amazing event. But I'm really hoping for an East Coast, Northeast Coast um, event someday. I mean, we have, we have had Anaheim and Chicago and Florida. I mean, I guess that's East Coast. But it um, would be nice for New York. Anybody in Lucasfilm watching? New York. New York 2021. Let's do it. Let's do it. Make it an East Coaster. All right. I know it's not as cool as doing it anywhere else. All right. So this, I'm glad I saved for this one for last. I wasn't 100% sure. But wow, they put it in a garbage bag. Okay. This one I was so excited about. Oh, I got a pin too. Oh, I got a Rex, Captain Rex pin. I didn't even think about that. But look at this. Oh my God. It is Star Wars Celebration Chicago Holiday Special Lunchbox. Yes, I kid you not, an actual lunchbox. No thermos in it, but that's okay. I cannot tell you how excited I am about this. It's like probably, if I'm not mistaken, one of the first pieces of merchandise related to the Star Wars Holiday Special that has been released. I am so in love with this, I cannot even tell you, okay? It is, um, well, no, it's not the, I don't think it's the, it's the, is, was it the 40? Yeah, I guess in, 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 uh, 
in December or, or November of 2018, it would have been the 40th anniversary of the holiday special. O for those who don't know, only aired once. Why was it only aired once? Well, the holiday special. What could one say about the holiday special? It was um, it was at the very tail end of the 70s, late 70s, early 80s kind of um, variety show type of programming. What's a variety show? Well, if you can think of like, if anybody have heard of like people like Bob Hope or Jack Benny or Milton Berle or things like these, these great classic comedians that would put on these variety shows and they'd have special guest stars and, and you know, they would have a lot of singing and dancing and comedy sketches, that kind of thing, you know. And that was a very unique form of entertainment and it was very popular in the 70s and 80s. Well, they tried to make a variety show out of Star Wars. And I guess some would say it failed miserably. Most would say it failed miserably. I choose to say that it created a very unique and awesome, but weird and kind of hard to watch in some ways or parts of it really hard to watch or parts of it impossible to watch um, segments that uh, <laughs> was just made it an interesting topic. Now, it was never considered canon. It was never considered part of it. I'm not even going to talk about it. Judge for yourself. You can go on YouTube and just type in the Star Wars Holiday Special. There are... It's funny. I think one guy or girl somewhere in the Midwest taped it with a, with a Betamax tape because it was because Betamax were just coming out. It's a precursor to VCR. That one tape is where that has been... It has been copied and recopied and put on DVD and put on YouTube and it's hysterical because when you watch you can watch it with commercials and the commercials are all from the same part of the country so it's the same recording so some person you know because and I think George Lucas would love to get a hold of that person and you know, do bodily harm because he couldn't stand it he was so so sorry it happened and he wishes he could take every copy and I think he said this take every copy and destroy it but what are you gonna do? It's out there, and it is interesting. It featured Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, um, it, um, Carrie Fisher, pretty much the entire cast. Uh, but it was really about Chewbacca and about Chewbacca's family, and most of it's focusing on Chewbacca's wife, uh, Mala, son Lumpy, and father Itchy. And I don't want to get into any more of it. We've talked more about it. We've talked briefly in other episodes about it, but um, it is really cool. But one thing, one really cool shining moment from it came in the form of a cartoon that aired towards the latter half of the uh, in the latter half of the episode of the special it was a two hour special and towards the second half in the second half they, they aired this cartoon it was about a eight ten minute cartoon and it featured all the characters and it also introduced Boba Fett and this is the intro introduction of Boba Fett in fact it has gotten so ingrained in pop culture kind of like in the subculture of pop culture and kind of the hidden doorway of pop culture that people like John Favreau who is producing and writing for the Mandalorian, which is coming to Disney Plus streaming service in the fall, he actually created some of the weaponry from based on the cartoon, and he gave it to his Mandalorian character. So, such an awesome thing. And as I said, it also this this uh, particular um, item also came with a Captain Rex pin, which again I'll get a close up of. And um, it was it was just uh, epic to see this. And I, I don't know for sure, but I think they might have sold out because it was such a cool thing. And this was the best part. This, this, the, these cartoons, these, this artwork. It was done by the same company whose name escapes me, but the same company that does, um, that did droids and Ewoks. But they did some, I think, Nelvana or Nirvana or something, and they uh, did this art. They did the artwork. It was so cool. It was so well done, um, and it was great. They all did their voices, you know, Mark Harrison and Carrie. So it was really cool. So that is my haul. There are no more items. I did try to purchase a few things that didn't come through. Like a, sometimes people will do like a swag bag. What is that? It's like you can walk to every booth and they'll give you a pens and buttons and pins, you know, complimentary. And they just fill up a bag filled with these things, postcards and, um, you know, individual trading cards. And, and they have, um, and they sit there and, you know, they, they just give them out. As, you know, most of them have the name or information about whatever that booth is. So it could be everywhere from it could be booths about podcasts, about stores, about collectible clubs, anything. And uh, then some people will just take the entire bag of swag and put it out there on eBay. And boy, 
I put put my bid in and it kept going up and up and up and up and I just finally had to throw my hands up. I said, I can't, I can't. It's just, most of it's just postcards and pins. I, I've got my whole boxes and boxes and boxes filled with them from my, my times attending celebrations. So I didn't do that. But other than that, you can look on eBay. You can still find things. In fact, some things that the prices have gone down a little bit because you know the the rush to have it right away has faded, and now people are just you know picking and choosing what they really like. So also some things things that they don't sell out of in the in the um, celebration store will go on sale at Repop, um, and which is the company that ran the ran the convention, and they'll have a they'll have a sale on their. A website so I'm just waiting on that and see if there's a few other items okay so that will do it for this week's episode of Darth Tuba's unboxing show celebration exclusives be sure to like subscribe hit the notification button check me out on Instagram and and Twitter at Darth Tuba Darth Tuba's Star Wars unboxing page on Facebook uh, leave comments or email me Darth Tuba 77 at gmail.com if you have any questions or comments um, we got a few other things coming in the mail. We got a few other things. We got a few other shelf talks on the way. So we're looking forward to a lot of cool things coming up. So thank you so much for watching. In the meantime, until next time, rather, may the force be with you.